Hello folks and welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to go for a flight in the SimWorks Studios RV10. And this is where I need to make an apology <laughs> to SimWorks Studios. I've had this aircraft for quite a while now and I've been meaning to make a little mini review of this, but I've just been so busy. But here it is now and uh, we're gonna go for a flight up to Auckland city center it's going to be very stunning hopefully anyway in the Vari aero and i'm using of course as always the doff reality h2 although you can't see my ugly mug today i thought i'd leave the camera off for this one <laughs> but i will be in it and i've got it all set up to fly this aircraft correctly with the stick right in the center that is also thanks to a new product that i now use which is called let me get this right q r for sim rigs I can never get it right, but I think that's what it's called. I'll show you some shots now of what it looks like. Quick release plates that are absolutely fantastic and make life so much easier. So yeah, back to this aircraft. It is a beauty. And in fact, it's very cheap for what you're getting. Because SimWorks Studios really do stand for quality. And I truly mean that. Um, even though this isn't a study level general aviation aircraft, which you've seen quite a bit of on the channel recently and in the future, Got some really nice aircraft coming, guys. <laughs> but this still has the flight model and the system's depth, which is enough for the enjoyment factor, but also for the realism factor. I think it has a nice balance of both. I think the area where the RV-10 excels the most is the way it flies. And I've said this before in a few of my other videos, SimWork Studios has a great way of making you feel like you're flying. The flight modeling is very fluid. So with that being said, let's go for a flight in this gorgeous aircraft. And there's some nice little touches, for instance, the VR click spots, which we're not gonna need in the Vari Air, of course. I thought I'd show you that anyway. Things like, uh, for instance, if you open the glove box, you have the brochure and look at the way it opens out in front of you. That is quality. I love that animation. Very nice. <laughs> it folds up as well. Quite satisfying, those sounds. But right, anyway, we'll uh, select our fullest tank. The alternator battery is on, including the standby alternator. And we're just going to uh, enable the fuel pump quickly. Notice the sound, how it changes depending on my throttle position. Nice. I haven't flooded the engine because it didn't need to be on that long. And I think we're ready guys for an engine start. Here we go. Now this is one of the reasons why I love this aircraft so much. The sounds are spectacular. Listen to the way they change with the spatial sound effects and even at the back you hear the sort of prop wash effect as well. And just the general fit and finish is absolutely 100% Perfect, really. It just looks gorgeous in here, especially as I say in the aero. The leather stitching and the materials all look exactly how they should. Right, Avionics Master can now come on. We don't really need the pito heat on today, it's quite warm. And by the way, the lighting in this thing is gorgeous at night. It's very, very nice. Right, I should have put uh, perhaps my taxi light on first as my beacon light, but never mind. We'll gloss over that. <laughs> But all these panel lights and everything look really nice. And this LED does uh, shine very bright. And look at this. Even the um, all of these vents move. And it's got a fully animated and dynamic uh, climate control system. Just like the Kodiak as well. So that is cool. We've got all that down here. Listen to this. The parking brake is down here, by the way. So... I think it's now time to taxi out and head to Auckland. This is a very heavy area for photogrammetry and in fact performance. 
does suffer even with my 4090 card. It's a bit of a taxi now, so I'll see you as we line up for takeoff. Right, I'll shut up now, guys, and you can hear the beautiful sounds of this aircraft. Here we go. The sound set in this is definitely one of the party pieces of this add-on. I think you'll agree. Now there is no, um, as far as I'm aware, failure system or persistency, state saving, all the kind of things that we do love, I must admit as a general aviation enthusiast, but if you think about the price of this bird, this is all about the flying, it's all about feeling fantastic as you fly this thing because you really do in VR it kind of feels like you've got a very expensive beautiful aircraft all to yourself and she's very lively as well especially in the motion rig that's one thing I've really enjoyed now that I have one of these amazing rigs I get a different feel for the aircraft I'm flying for instance, I can tell the difference between an F-16, a Typhoon, or say a 172, and an RV-10. You know, it feels different. As I'm flying and doing this, I really feel like I'm being thrown around a bit more. This photogrammetry here is absolutely beautiful. I'm really, really enjoying this aircraft. And in fact, I'm really enjoying making videos like this where I'm just flying guys, you know, I'm not showing you any new hardware as such, which I do enjoy doing of course, but really the heart of this channel is just enjoying VR and I do really enjoy just sharing my flights on the channel. Even if they don't get as many views, I don't care about that, it's all about sharing the passion. Now once we have a little tour around Auckland, we'll do a stall in this aircraft just to show you how well it's modelled. Because let's face it, we'd all love to own one of these in real life. But for the price of a coffee and a cake in this day and age, you can get yourself a very well simulated version. <laughs> all the links will be in the description below where you can find this gorgeous aircraft. But I have to say, there's not a lot I don't like about it. In fact, I don't think there's anything I don't like about it. Like I say, I would like to see some uh, more failure modelling and that kind of thing, but then that would drive the price up. It's a very happy little aircraft, this. <laughs> anyway, let's just um, fuel pump on and switch tanks. Fuel flow is good. Fuel pump off. Now, at this point, I'm just going to shut up, put a bit of nice music in, and enjoy the sights of Auckland. I think you'll agree guys, that was pretty spectacular. This is such a fun little aircraft to fly. And again Alex, I'm so sorry for taking ages to show this on the channel. 
but I got there eventually. Better late than never. <laughs> the next we're going to check out a lighthouse, which must be over on this little island over here. Oh, look at this. Gorgeous. That is beautiful. Asobo has done such a great job of New Zealand with their partners. They really have. Right then. Then we'll just climb up now to about 3,000 feet. Which won't take that long in this aircraft, to be fair. Oh, I'm getting some turbulence now. Now, I always say this, guys, but apologies if the sort of video looks a little bit uh, jerky in places. Well, of course, I am talking with a VR headset on, but I don't see that in the headset. For anybody who's new to VR, it's completely natural. You look around just like you would in real life. That's also emphasised now that I've got a motion rig, so <laughs> it might make things even worse. But I am trying to keep my movements to a minimum here, the best I can. The curse of, you know, recording in VR. Look at that look. Another FS traffic airliner above us there. And already we're nearly at 3,000 feet. So I'm going to start bringing the power back. And we're just basically going to fly out the sky and see what happens. <laughs> Bearing in mind, as I say, I am in a motion rig, okay? So we'll see how this feels. These sorts of tests are so different now <laughs> than they used to be. Let's see what happens. Oh my god! Oh! What the? Oh god, that felt absolutely... Yeah, we had a left wing drop. And normally when I do something like that, I would be very calm. But in a motion rig, I just got f literally thrown to the left-hand side there. That's very realistic. And it just shows you the flight modelling of this aircraft is up there with the best. Despite the very, very cheap price. I'm not going to do that again, because that scared me half to death. But uh, just <laughs> that's when I should have had the camera on. My goodness me. It totally changes everything. And it makes you fly differently. It makes you fly more realistically. Because you know that you're going to get thrown around, just like you were in the real aircraft. One thing I must show you before I forget, and that is the Skyfosim integration. This is a very nice feature here. And Skyfosim pad, well, I've actually done a review on the channel, but since then it's had all sorts of updates. It's a very different beast now. And as you can see here, it works really well. And you can do all sorts. Look at all these icons. Amazing. I probably should do a separate video on this to be fair, but there is a free version of it. And it works really, really well. As you can see, you've got all the information there that you possibly could need. Even um, bus trips and suggested flight plans. It's excellent. So if you're interested, I will do a separate video on that. But uh, yeah, very cool that that's integrated in this aircraft. Anyway, I'm going to enjoy these views and I'll see you a bit further up the road. So welcome back, we're now going to contact, oh god, Wangari, probably pronounced that completely wrong, and never mind, <laughs> and we're going to come in for a Tower full November stop landing. Mike Juliet, one, one mile southeast, 2,200 feet to land. November 547 Mike Juliet Tower, altimeter 30 decimal, zero, zero, wind calm, make left base runway 24. Watch that. Make left base runway 247, Mike Juliet. Tell you what, it's been quite a bumpy section this has. Maybe you can tell, but we're bobbing up and down quite a bit here. And yeah, I'm feeling everything. <laughs> anyway, let's get set up for landing now. Autopilot off. Just look at this scenery. It's really made me want to visit New Zealand even more now than before. <laughs> Such a gorgeous country. 
it's so wonderful how we can tour these areas in the sim with this level of detail, especially in VR. What a time to be alive, eh? Especially for a flight sim fan, that is for sure. I've also really enjoyed flying to the custom airfields. I think they're a notch above anything I've seen so far. There's even things like animated horses and whales and goodness knows what in the scenery. I feel like they've made more of an effort with New Zealand, personally, than other world updates. Perhaps because it is a little bit smaller, they can pack more detail. Do let me know in the comments below, guys. Have you enjoyed flying around New Zealand like I have? They're just feeling the bumps here from the cliff edge there. Like crosswind. We are down. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. This... Oh, hang on. Yes, I'm doing it now. <laughs> Roger that. One one eight decimal six for seven, Mike Juliet. Just park here, I think. So I hope you enjoyed that little run out in the SimWork Studios RV10. Definite recommendation. And uh, yeah, especially flying over New Zealand. Absolutely stunning. Thank you so much for watching as always. I really truly appreciate it and once again sorry to Alex for taking so long to uh, get this video out. But you know what? I absolutely adore this little gem of an aircraft, especially if you consider the price. A very high quality general aviation aircraft indeed. Take care. I'll see you again very soon. Bye bye for now.